Welcome to Worst Collection Ever, the Correspondence Edition. Yes, this is... Uh, oh, man. This is a little bit different. A little bit different. We'll do a little bit of a chatting. We'll do this every so often, kind of, you know, because we, we... Collect some of our correspondence together. Well, here's the thing. is like We do a lot of pod... When we do our podcast, we do a pretty long podcast. Yeah. And uh, it's easy... I think it'd be easier for us to just have our stuff you know maybe it's kind of separate a little bit yeah and you know so why not so we think away so you know we'll we'll read some correspondence and we'll make kind of keep it as a um kind of keep it to that Mm -hmm. you know so as we get the correspondence we'll read through them and you know you know we'll do that every so often yeah so um so here we go (laughs) (laughs) i don't i don't know i don't don't know know what we're gonna do how do we start do you want me to start um let me let's let's let me read a let me read an email okay here um did i did we get any here let me see i am not very prepared well i've got twitter up why don't i do that yeah do twitter um so from our buddy nick or lane at 360 and he had actually sent me a message a little bit ago and i forgot to uh talk about it on the show he asked if we had any interest in D D. Um, I have never personally played Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, I don't know about you. No. Sean, uh, yeah, I, I have. My, I've only played Magic the Gathering. Yeah, my Dungeons and Dragons experience is as follows. So I was goth, as we know. Uh, and I was goth in college, and I was a freshman in college, and the only other goth kids in, on campus were huge D&D fans. Well, they invited me over to play. I don't know how to play. So I just sat in a corner wearing a cape. Because that's what you do when you're in college. And then I left. And then I never saw them again. And that was my attempt at having friends and playing D&D. Yeah. So, <laughs> so that's that. Um, but then, let's see. He also tweeted at us to... You know, we had discussed uh, Powerless on uh, the show last if, week. If we discussed it? No, we discussed it. Yeah. And, and so he had asked if we had watched any of the Marvel oh, Netflix yeah. shows. Yeah. And yes, uh, we absolutely have. Uh, we watched them all. Uh, I really did like them. Uh, but like I said on Twitter, I felt they were like two episodes too long. They could have been condensed down. And I, I think that goes for all of them. Yeah. That they kind of drag in the middle and they, they were really just trying to get to a certain number of episodes instead of really weren't wondering about yeah, how that's... the stories they were telling could be told. And you don't have to do a traditional 13 episode no, uh, you don't. Series on Netflix. You, can make, you it, can make it eight. You can make it eight or make it six. You can make it seven. Why not? It doesn't matter. So I think that there was a lot of stuff that could have been cut. Yeah. Um, but yeah, definitely I, Luke Cage. Luke Cage, definitely Daredevil too, especially in the second season. I thought well, obviously Jessica Jones too. Jessica I mean, Jones. I mean, they all, all did. Them. They all dragged you there know. in the middle. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm. St- we're, I think we're still kind of getting used to this format, and you know, maybe they'll start working on to make it correct and make those episodes more engaging. Yeah. But makes some of the all the episodes engaging. But um, well, actually, because uh, I was listening to the Gilmore guys, you know, when they were doing their podcast, yeah, and you know, they were talking about you know these shows, and uh, Demi, one of the guys, he said, uh, the the Mar- the Netflix shows are the best uh, example of why network time limits exist. Yeah. Uh, because you've got commercials and you have all this stuff, but then at the same time, it keeps you to a certain, you're telling stories, you've got certain beats. Yeah. So then when you don't have it, you kind of go a little wandery. Yeah. And you put way too much stuff in. Um, so, and I would agree with that. I think that they're great shows. I really liked New, uh, Luke Cage. I mm-hmm. really liked Jessica Jones. I, I liked Daredevil. I thought the second season was a little meh, but, um, I'm excited to see the rest of them, including Power or uh, Iron Fist. Yeah, when that one comes out, and I'm really just hoping that they c- pick up the pace and they fix that that problem that they seem to be having. I don't know what I want to say, but yeah, but it definitely makes a good point. Yeah, that it uh, it takes uh, a long uh, a longer time. It takes too long of a time to tell the stories they want to tell, and I just feel like 
you know, especially for something like Daredevil, because they, uh, like, I don't know, just drawing out stuff with Foggy and Karen. I'm just like, I don't, I don't care mm-hmm. about those characters. I really don't like those characters. But I, and, and it, it, I feel for some reason I feel like they're way more integral. They make them seem like they're more integral to the Daredevil mythos than maybe they really are. And, and I'm look, I'm not an avid Daredevil reader, so I could be very off on this point. Yeah. But it doesn't necessarily, you know, doesn't interest me. And it just feels like they, when they do these shows, that they just pad them out with, you know, miscellany that comes in the form of these characters. And, yeah. Yeah. So, I don't know. Yeah. Well, there's, there's a little bit that could be fixed. But I, again, I still like it a lot. Uh, I, you know, I'm going to keep watching them. Yeah, definitely. Uh, but then we have a, another tweet from somebody named, uh, it's at Mart Gray, who is a sub editor, reviewer, blogs on comics at Too Dangerous for a Girl. Uh, and he does a bit of theater and he lives in. Uh, Too Dangerous for a Girl. That's what it says. Does that. Oh, you know what? I think I know who this is now. Oh, indeed. Because he... Well, he... He was uh, tweeting at me because uh, we were talking about Lisa Stan Stansfield yeah. at one point and how everybody thought I was related to her. And I was like, oh, it's Lisa Stanfield. And he's like, no, I promise it's Lisa Stansfield. So thank you uh, yeah. <laughs> for correcting me because, again, we don't do research on this show. Uh, so, yeah. 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 No research. Um, I have tweets oh tweets i got one actually from uh, a twitter account mm-hmm. kia lundy mm-hmm. k-e-a-l-u-n-d-e-y what does she do uh she is into riot girl stuff and plays games cool so you are a friend of us as far as i'm concerned um so she says, listening to the podcast, and I realized uh, you were changing the wrong name. It's Andrew Dice Clam. <laughs> and God damn it, you're right. That's fantastic. Yeah. Absolutely. You're we're, much that be- was that was. You're much better at this than we are. You're much better at comedy than I can ever be. <laughs> Andrew so thank Dice you, Clam. Uh, Kia Lundy. Oh, and you know he would be totally drawn like a little clamshell. Just with, wearing a jacket. With, with jacket, his, with his hair. With hair yeah. On the yeah. You have like moss growing out of the top of his shell, like like his hair, and then he'd have a cigarette. Yep. Oh, man. Andrew Dice Clam. Andrew Dice Clam. Uh, also, Nick also, uh, uh, Lane, uh, Lane sent us a nice picture, which I've seen before. I know. I like this one. Uh, it's the, the cartoon of Batman, or Superman and uh, Wonder Woman, and they're... Uh, just standing there, found fending. You know, it's like they're kind of drawn like in their classic. Yeah, and they're they're standing together and they're getting shot at. And then she's deflecting bullets with her bracers, and he's just you know using his chest. And he's like, "Hey, aren't you bulletproof?" And she's like, "Yeah." And he's like, "Well, why do you bother with those braces?" And she's like, "Let me show you." So she stops, and then it hits her in the boob, and her boob jiggles. And, and then there's like, jiggle, jiggle. Everybody's like, hey, 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 you know, and then, jiggle, 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 and he's jiggle, like, jiggle, he's, jiggle. And he's like, understood. Yeah. So thank you, Nick, for. Yes, uh, I enjoy that a lot. For sharing that with that us. Because that is true. Um, the pain of boobs. The pain of boobs. <laughs> Batman Nightcast, a thrilling new podcast from the Fire and Water Podcast Network, hosted by Ryan Daly and Chris Franklin. Nightcast chronicles the Cape Crusaders' adventures in Batman and Detective Comics after Crisis on Infinite Earths. Highlights from this legendary era include Batman number 400, Legends, Mike Barr and Alan Davis, Batman Year One, Batman Year Two, Max Allen Collins, Ugh. Um, the new Jason Todd, Ugh. Millennium. You're not doing this right. Let me take over. Alan Grant and Norm Brayfogle. Alan Grant from Jurassic Park? Did you hear me say Norm freaking Brayfogle? Oh, yeah. Son of the Demon. The Killing Joke. A Death in the Family. Batman Year Three. A Lonely Place of Dying. Alan Grant, Alan Davis, Max Allen Collins. Why are there so many people named Alan from this era of Batman? The Rise of Tim Drake. Legends of the Dark Knight. And that's just up until 1989. Did anything exciting happen with Batman after that? You'll have to tune in to find out. Batman Nightcast, part of the Fire and Water Podcast Network. Find it on iTunes and at fireandwaterpodcast.com. Oh, we forgot to mention your favorite issue, when Batman fires Dick Grayson. You want to find another co-host?
Okay, so I guess we have some emails. Cool. Got a few emails from our, our buddy, Russell Bragg, who... Uh, from the DC Comics Present Show. DC Comics Present Show, Russell Bragg, the mighty Russell Bragg, who, by the way, um, I listened to an episode of Back to the Bins, uh, which is another podcast that uh, is that talks about random comics like uh-huh. we do. And uh, Russell is a very big uh, supporter of that show too, and he sends out a lot of emails to that show too, which is fantastic, which is awesome. And I love that. I love we the, love the I love that you, community. I love that. I love that you do that, Russell. But he just sent us a few emails. Uh, this is in reference. First one's a reference to the "What If" Black Goliath episode we did two weeks ago. Yes, a few weeks ago. And uh, um, I'll be honest. There's a lot of stuff here. I don't know if I'm going to read all of this. It's kind of long. Um, but he does Wait, go back down. What go back down? That's the end nope, of the go email. back up where it says onto the comic. Well, I just want to address real quick. So he does, um, he does give us a, a, oh, a song, a song, a blues song, the worst collection ever. Blues, yes, this goes on my album when this I goes finally because he it. says, uh, this is if Jen's gonna do an album, uh, you know, the song ought to go on here. I'm not gonna sing it, I am not a I'm not a I'm not a blues fan to be honest. But it's low it's 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 a it's a good song. It's my and hopefully Sean will play a harmonica as suggested. But I could play trombone. Basically, uh, my my hubby and I have a comic da, na, 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 like that. I'm guessing. It, it actually it reminds me that of the movie that we were just talking about today mm. in uh, Adventures in Babysitting. Oh yeah. Where there's a scene where they run into a bl- the Elizabeth Shue and the kids wherever they run into a blues club Mm -hmm. and they have to like in order to leave they have to sing the blues (laughs) and so they sing the blues and if that that were us i'd have to sing this yes um so thank you for the song we appreciate i'm gonna i'm gonna perfect it and get it on my album yeah maybe 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 we'll get a writing card maybe (laughs) as a special bit (laughs) at any royalty maybe as a special bit maybe jen will sing it (laughs) one day Jen will sing it, and then we'll put it out. I'll have Sean produce special. it for me. Yeah, I'll put it out. I'm, I'm not singing it. I've only sang publicly maybe once or twice. Well, like not even in choir? Yeah, I never did choir. Oh, my God. I was in choir all the time. Yeah, I never. I mean, I, there was forced choir. Oh, no. Uh, when you were in a kid, when you were like in grade school. Oh, sure. Yeah. You know, that, that's what I call it. Forced <laughs> choir. Well, no, I was in choir because I wasn't in band because my mom didn't want me to play any. He, she didn't want me to play the trombone. Yeah. That was an, uh, I was in, I was in, I played trombone from yeah. like fourth grade till when I was a senior. Yeah, no, my mom was like, no, that's an ugly instrument. You don't get to play it. So yeah. there goes my musical dreams. Uh, and I, I would sing in choir. And when I was younger, I my I was I could get high notes or whatever. And then I got older and I got bigger and my voice got lower. And now the only people I can sing along to are like Cher, and <laughs> like Daughtry. I do really well with, but like other than that, I'm pretty fucked. <laughs> Daughtry would be very impressed. Uh, yeah, no, I, I'm awesome with Daughtry songs, but I can't really sing anything else because uh, my range is very low. Not yeah. that, not that that's a surprise. This I cannot a sing at voice. all. I am. I oh, am, I can't. I've only sang. Uh, I sang karaoke once. I sang uh, Copacabana, and then I also once sang uh, Cheap Tricks Surrender. But you know. Not with any actual like talent. Yeah. So, uh, if I ever do karaoke, I really want to do karaoke somewhere where I can sing a crazy ex girlfriend song <laughs> called "Heavy Boobs" because I feel that is my theme song and I really want to sing it. Uh, but I don't think it's really in a lot of karaoke libraries. It's a no karaoke library. Yeah. So until right. we get there, unless there's like a a TV slash movie slash Broadway song karaoke bar somewhere. Yeah. Uh, I, I I have no no chance. So let me let me go. Let's go through here. To, uh, Russell has comments on the comic here. He says, "Now on to the comic. I truly enjoyed it. I remember What If number thirty seven very well. It's been ages since I've read it, but it was a good one. Damn right. Uh, I did have the comic from the stands. Uh, but once the powers that be put them all in trade paperback, I bought the trade and sold the comic. Smart. Smart. Yep. Also, I didn't realize they put they put all those in there. I don't know. Apparently, they didn't. That's Apparently. very exciting. Yeah, it's very exciting. What if classic volume number six? Oh shit! See, they've got you, all sorts of volumes. Can I get that on Comicology? I Maybe. will probably look. You I will look, look that up. You should totally look. Yeah. All right. I didn't, awesome. know, I didn't know that that many volumes. How much space would we save? 
Well, us, we only have like maybe two what if comics from there. Well, I, I'm just saying. Oh, yeah. <laughs> in general, if we could get all of our shit digital digitized, yeah, we would have so so much more space. I love what if comics, and as stated last email, I think the cover of was what convinced me to get it according to the marvel wiki if each what if story has its own earth that's kind of weird uh the thing story was on earth 8321 and well the b story is on eight earth 8320 okay uh why couldn't they be on earth wi like all the brave and the bold stories were oh, supposed really? to be on earth b see i didn't know that i didn't know that either no see knowledge Anyway, I hope Ben and Alicia and Giant Man don't find out about this Earth. I think they'd be very upset. Ben was <laughs> cured. Alicia can see. Giant Man cured himself and joined the Fantastic Four. Yeah, they, they did pretty good for themselves. There. They really, really did. He did find and, and he and you know and, and Giant Man did uh, find Jamba Juice. Yeah. So yeah, he did. That's right. He started, He found a Jamba Juice. Uh, so man, he's probably like a billionaire right now. Yeah, he would be so rich, and he's not dying from radiation poisoning. Yeah. Um, all because the th- let's say really enjoyed your coverage. Well, yeah, all because thing was cured in our reality. Um, wait, so our reality is Earth. Uh, you know, three, two, the, I don't know exactly how it works in Marvel. I know that in DC, Earth One is where all of the standard Batman stories happen. Earth Two is where the Golden Age lives. Earth Prime is our Earth. is our Earth. That's where we are. Earth Prime. Um, I don't know how it works in Marvel. Yeah, it, it works kind of weird the same weird in some ways, yeah. and I don't. I'm that's assuming why, it works. And the that's same, why but... I don't read current comics because yeah. it's all this shit is all part. I yeah. don't care about the Ultimate Universe or any of that stuff. I can't deal with it. Yeah. Um, really enjoy your coverage. I don't think I've mentioned it, but I truly enjoy all the wrestling references. Yay. I miss product. I miss the product from my childhood. It's not that I don't watch it today. I just miss, but I missed uh, Hulk Hogan, Macho Man, Jake the Snake, DDT, and covering his opponent with giant with a giant snake. I still have my DVDs, and I can watch anything I want on the WWE Network, as okay. you should. Yes. Uh, oh man, is that constantly playing here? Yeah. So much WWE um, Network. I I guess I don't like. I guess I don't like change very much, and wish it could be like it used to be. Uh, Hey, man, I wish grunge was still a thing. I know. I wish it was still in the 90s. <laughs> I do, I'll too. I'll be honest. Uh, how much would I love it for to be grunge again? Do you know how I would love to walk around in a fucking pair of uh, a flannel and some goddamn Doc Martens? Yeah. I'm going to bring that look back. Yeah, do it. I did that before I went goth. It was a lot of fun. I uh, guess I've rambled on long enough. Before I close, I did have a few more episode ideas. Uh, I always love when you bring both Superman and Batman down a peg. <laughs> um, taking them down maybe you could do a world's finest that's the, comic that's the point of this podcast we haven't done a world's finest comic in a while i feel like. and oh didn't i bought some today oh we, we have plenty we oh have my god i have plenty. i buy them all the time i have so many we i can't i gotta so think so many i don't know if we have number 83 though no that's dc Comics. Oh, presents sorry 83. i can only i'm far away yeah um I, we, well, which we is Superman, Batman, and the Outsiders, which eventually... You know, we'll, we'll get to it. But yeah, I've got a ton of World's, world's Finest. We can definitely work that in. Yeah, I also love Superboy, the real Superboy, the one who grew up to be Superman. Oh, yeah, we see we... Oh, I've got tons of those. And we have a lot of the new adventures of Superboy, the, the second, you know, series. Yeah. Which, you know, we've done a few times on this on the show as well. I have a lot of those. And uh, we can always go back to those. I think it's what Superman comics is and Batman comics is that we're... We're so I, I I love doing them. Oh yeah! I just feel like we're kind of you know it's just so easy for us to do them. Well yeah, and in, in the you know the idea is to go through all of the collection and give a kind of a, a sample of all the crazy things that we have. Yeah. So that's kind of where we're as, headed. With as that. much I w- as I would love to do nothing but world's finest every week or, or Batman every week or something. Uh, I don't think that truly represents the amount of crap that we have. Uh, but we will do them again. Yeah, and I've got a great Jimmy Olsen that I can't wait. Yeah, to we'll get to. We'll cannot get, wait to break that. Yeah, one. We'll, we'll we'll get to we'll get to some crazy stuff. We got. Yeah. I mean, I think we kind of, you know, we kind of kind of try to space it out because yeah. it's easy for us to just be like, let's do a comic. What do you want to do? Brave and the Bold. Yeah, Dead, and I don't Batman want people to be like, oh god, they're going to talk about Jimmy Olsen again. They're going to talk about Batman again. We could talk about Lois Lane. I mean, we'll talk about. We could do that all oh, yeah, day. I've got a bunch of Lois. Lanes. But you gotta, you know, you gotta deal with us talking about Cable. You know, or or cable? gunfire or whatever oh, it is. Fucking gunfire, man. Yeah, um, maybe you could bring in a romance comic. Hey, hope you oh, like hey. this episode. Oh, I hope you like this episode this week. Oh uh, yeah, because we just did. 
Whatever you, you choose is that. whatever you choose is fine by me. Keep up the fine work, uh, Russell Bragg from Thanks, Clarksburg, Russell. West Virginia. Oh man, host of the DC Comics Presents show. Thank you, uh, Russell. Um, I've heard it's beautiful in West Virginia. Let me actually let me break this up actually for a second here because uh, I just realized that the buddy. The guy that commented here is the same. I think it's the same cat. Oh, that, that's him. Yep, that's him. Yeah, this uh, this cat Martin Gray. Yep. Who commented who t- on? Who tweeted at us? He tweeted at us, and he also I also posted my new episode on uh, Back Issue Magazine on Facebook. Oh. Which uh, just you is know that a group. It's a group. I'm on. A, I'm on. I'm on a few groups. Oh well, I mean, like it's it's just a group about comics, or it's a group about what? The comic books. Oh, neat. Yeah, which I think I've probably added you to. Did I not? You added me to like a 1980 group yeah i probably i think I, I think i added you to this one too okay maybe i just didn't see it yet because it's 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 a lot of fun it's people just talk about back issues and it's kind of basically the same kind of you know vibe that we do Neat. um but martin uh commented on my on our justice league task force issue episode and he says uh oh gypsy was not so useless in detroit justice league she was likable and spunky and good with her developing powers hmm. i agree I will agree with that. Okay. Um, I didn't. I, I have not read any, so I cannot. She, say she's not later. nearly. Let's just put it this way: she's not anywhere nearly as intrusive and frustrating to in their existence as Vibe was during those years. Yeah, I am. Well, I, I'm glad he is not. I, I feel. I would feel really bad if he was trying to defend Vibe. Well, here's the thing: in in fairness, uh, the book that we read. Literally, the only thing Gypsy did was cry and sit in the bathroom. She did a lot of it. This was this way. And, and just so, like Task Force, she does a lot of that. Just saying. But I mean, she does. And I, <laughs> I did respond to uh, uh, what um, Martin here, and I did mention that I did like the mother, not the, the mother, but the fatherly, you know, the, the relationship they had. It's a very, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. very good relate. You know, it's a very mentor. Minty. Thing, men, men, menty. It's Minty. No, mentor um, Minty. Minty. Menti. Menti. Menchies. <laughs> Menchie. um, oh, I'd love some Menchies. And uh, he also he goes, I found those final issues by J.M.D. Mateus powerful and poignant and that Elrond Des- Despero should figure out makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Sure, it does. Yeah. Yeah, I, I completely I agree. agree. I mean, I have to make fun of her, though. Oh, well, yes. So I mean, that's, that's, what, that's we what we do, do. <laughs> Um And the J.M.D., he's right about those episodes because they, they get dark. Yeah. Because that's when we're like, you know, vibe dies dies uh <laughs> uh steel dies like steel gets fucked up yeah uh the, what's his face what's her face gypsy like has to kind of like fake her death mm. and convinces his android not to kill her it's really actually very it's a very difficult so it's not difficult i mean i could read it but it's just it's there's a lot it's 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 hard a lot of shit it's harsh on. There's some harsh stuff going on in there, and uh, that at the end of those, yeah, at the end of the GLA Detroit area, that's they they just decimate that team, yeah. So they can just get on with bringing on the new Justice League, you right. know, the Waha, whatever, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. So um, he also says Batman's mechanic Harold came back on All Star oh, Batman yes. recently. That was the thing we were we, 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 we referenced were him a lot about, actually. Uh, the the blind. T- Man, who I believe is also a hunchback, who lived in the Batcave for a time and fixed Batman's car. Yeah. Uh, who was being held hostage uh, by Bruce Wayne and not being paid. And he's not being held hostage. He just is like, hey, you want to live? I, I know, but it's funnier if we say that he's being held hostage. Uh, <laughs> and his name is Harold. <laughs> Harold. We forgot his name. And I said, Harold, yes, letting Batman letting a dude live in his Batcave is a plot not adequately explored. Yeah, no, totally. We should. Yeah, well, <laughs> that's like letting somebody live above your garage. That need <laughs> or like living in the like crashing on your couch, like in the den or whatever. That needs to be. That needs to be a plot somehow in Gotham or something. <laughs> like he needs to go to school with Bruce or something. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, love J. I love JLA Task Force idea of gathering team members according to the mission. Uh, I wish DC would try something again with a clever writer such as Al Ewing. <laughs> Yeah, no, agreed. Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah, I like. I mean, it's kind of like Secret Defenders. Yeah, Secret Defenders would just be like Doctor Strange being like, "All right, I need like this dude, this dude, I need this six dude." Dudes. You know, or you know, later issues Doctor Druid, which we'll do with Secret Defenders coming up soon because those are weird. Um, yeah, neat. Yeah, so thank you, Martin. I yes, didn't realize thank it you. was the same cat that uh, yeah. tweeted at you, but thank you, Martin, for uh, checking out and uh, check out what's uh, his uh, blog is two. I'm sorry. Could you 
Oh, I have to remember. I got to pull this up. It's too uh, dangerous for a girl. Something. And that's like a Supergirl that. blog, I think. Right. You know. Uh, let me click. Hold on. You should, Hold on. I'm going. We should do that. Because I heard him referenced on the uh, Fire and Water podcast. Too dangerous. Fa- family who, of networks. For a girl. Family of podcasts. Which I uh, I like. I don't know. I'll be honest. I'm kind of like a mark for those shows. Oh, I know. And. I kind of like it's one of those things where I'm in high school and I'm like, hey, notice me. <laughs> You're we funny. do something funny. We just swear a lot. Do you like us? That's what we do. We're not going to change. It's <laughs> so too dangerous for a girl is dangermart.blogspot.com. What's it about, though? I'm getting there. It's about comics. Yeah, it's just got a lot of like cool comic reviews on here, which is awesome. There's some Superwoman. There's some Titans. This looks really cool. I haven't had a chance to read it, but it looks awesome. Yeah, so check out check out Martin's do, Martin's work there. Yeah, totally. So let's get to our last email here. Um, let's talk here. We got another email from one Russell Bragg, referring to Gunfire. From oh, our that's episode right. Last week he says Gunfire and his awesome ponytail. Um. So. I want to talk about here. I'm just looking through this email here. Okay. So he does give us a, so Russell very generously gives us some background about, um, Oh yes. Cause we talked about powerless powerless and he kind of, and we talked about how there was a cousin, uh, Alan Tudyk plays a car- character Van Wayne. Van Wayne. Yeah. Uh, and we were saying that, Apparently, there's a guy from the 60s who it was a Wayne cousin, he but was. I didn't remember his full name. Van Veer, Van Der Veer Wayne. So, Van Der Veer Wayne appeared in Batman number 148 in 1962. During a visit to his cousin, Van got himself into some trouble when he hired a con artist to impersonate Batman while he posed as Robin. He did all of this with the intention of impressing Dick Grayson uh, for some reason. Uh, but Van was not aware that they were, in fact, the real dynamic duo. Van had to be rescued by Batman and Robin in the after and in the aftermath of the situation he learned a humility lesson. Good for him. <laughs> well, good. I only remember the first Jack O' Lantern, uh, Daniel Cormack. We yeah. were also talking about him. Uh, he was introduced in the issue number eight of the Super Friends comic. I got to talk to, about him a little bit on episode number 46 of the DC Commons Presents show. He had uh, very few appearances before a crisis. After crisis, uh, the, when the United Nations decided to fund the Justice League International, the Global Guardians found themselves without financial support and disbanded. Uh, Cormac subsequently joined Ruman... How do I say Hajavardi? Havardi. Havarti's uh, army in not. Bialia. Uh, after Havarti was killed by Queen Bee, Jack O'Lantern voluntarily joins forces with the villainous in taking over the world. He is left dying in a sewer after a battle with the Justice League. Mm, sucks He's ass. found alive by his girlfriend Owl Woman in the Justice League Quarterly when the two heroes, heroes are found by Dr. Mist. Uh, they take a major part in reuniting the Global Guardians and fight with Sonar against the Justice League in Justice League Europe number 49 and 50. Afterwards, Jack dies of natural causes. So, wait. So, okay, so there's that guy. So, that's what happened to Jack o' Lantern. Is he still dead? But there was another Jack o' Lantern in Primal Force, and I think that was a different, obviously a different guy. Did he Did he buy by the rights like, uh, like uh, they did with the porcupine? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, he wore a red sweater, and he sold it. Yes. <laughs> they were like, you could be the Jack o' Lantern now. Um, and now you're going to be in Powerless. So on to the comic. Oh, I can't... gunfire. Yeah. Actually, I'm, I'm kinda, I kind of like, and by the way, Worst Collection Ever at gmail.com. Yes, please. Um, if you have any thoughts on any comics we've done in the past and you want to you know, share them with us, please do, because I like talking about this stuff. Oh, yeah. And I know Jen does, too. So um, on to the comic. I can't really say much since I've never heard of gunfire before well see, god damn it russell see, that was the thing i was wondering who else had actually heard of gunfire you should have you, you were around in 1993 i assume but you know what he probably did the smart thing and walked right by that <laughs> he was like nah <laughs> he did yeah, he was reading dc good dc he comics was reading presents. decent shit he's like i'm not gonna waste my money he on doing, that he was doing good i'm not wasting my money on gunfire <laughs> Well, 
smart. <laughs> Good job, Russell. Um, I guess it would be that would be just a be a cool power to have, making things explode with just a touch. Yeah. Uh, did you say Gunfire was arrested at the end of the story? Uh, not well. No, he wasn't arrested. Well, I mean, not technically. I don't know what happens. I don't know if he ends up in the police station at the end of the story. Because he he did go to the police or the station. next issue. Yeah, he did go to the police station once to he tell makes buddies his story. Then they let him go, but then at the very end, he does walk out arm in arm with the cop. He goes in this as a civilian to the police station. Yes, after they inquire him. Yes, and he, but him, and the cop at the end become buddies. Become kind of buddies. Kind of buddies. And then they walk out, and I don't know what happens after that. Yeah. If so, was he arrested at the very end of the issue? Yeah, I don't know. He maybe. Just, don't know. maybe. Possibly. Yeah, and then he just exploded the the cuffs off because he's fucking yeah, gunfire, right? How do you how do you how do you manage to keep that guy down? Well, if he if they cuffed him over cloth, then he wouldn't. I don't know how his power worked. I yeah. thought he had to put skin on it. Put some skin on. Yeah, he's got he's got to have some skin in this game. I have heard that many of the heroes from the Bloodline storyline were flops. What's what is your opinion? I couldn't say one way or the other since I wasn't into comics during the nineties. Okay, well that was that was hey fair you, enough. Um, I will. Have to give you my comics origin, but seeing how long this email is, I'd better wait. Maybe next time. Oh man, people have origin stories. Oh, That's man. exciting. I got an origin story. I was, I started out as a boy. Uh, <laughs> I thanks. was born, and then I got very big, and I lived in a crib. I lived in the crib, and like Hulk Hogan, Hulk Hogan did. <laughs> <laughs> and then I got, I got my mom got her face exploded by by duck beak. By duck. It was a really great story. We're referencing other stuff. Yep. Uh, thanks again for another fun episode. Russell Bragg, Clarksburg, West Virginia, host of the, Jesus Christ, Sam Crow's outside. Yep. Um, <laughs> host of the DC Comics Present show. Um, okay. Yeah. It's going. Oh, so Bloodlines. Um, I don't know what the hell happened with Bloodlines. Well, here's the thing. I realized they were trying to do something cool and edgy, but man, when I got into comics in like. Late ninety three, nineteen ninety four. Uh-huh. This Bloodlines, you know, DC Comics and Bloodlines, you know, was Bloodline was, was the Bloodlines was the rage. Yeah. At the time. I mean, well, it was what they were pushing. Yeah. So a lot of times when I would go into comic book stores and if I was looking through stuff and you know, you know, kinda like how you know, when you go into comic book stores and you look through box, you know, bins and you find a lot of New 52 shit. Oh, yeah. You know, this is basically like what I was finding. I'd find a bunch of, you know, stuff from, you know, Bloodlines, you know, yeah. the, all these annuals and stuff because they ran through this. And uh, I, you know, I, I don't know. For, as far as I'm concerned, I had no problem with it, you yeah. know, because it was it was something new to me. Yeah. You know, and uh, I, I mean, the, it, it, it's stupid. Stupid. Yeah. But it was, and it was something that they were trying to, trying to push at the time, because being a part of the '90s, you know, action scene. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah. I mean, I, I didn't. It didn't bother me. I like. I I I liked. Uh, well, first of all, I know like everybody, basically everybody that anytime you refer to about Bloodlines, everybody is like, well, Hitman came from Bloodlines. Mm. Hitman, which uh, he came from. It was created by uh, Garth Ennis. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he, he debuted in uh, Demon Annual number three okay. or two. I, don't know, I have it. Um, he, you know, be, you know, his, you know, he he had his own series and it went on to you know be around for a while. Yeah, so he was pretty popular. Um, I never read anything from Bloodline from uh, Hitman. Yeah, no, I don't know. However, um, I am a fan of some of the other ones. I. Do why well, do I I I I, don't know, I think gunfire's you know fine. Yeah, it was fine. I'm not a huge. I mean, I'm I I never really read any of the bloodlines and and what I've read here, I'm not hugely impressed with. Uh, yeah. I can't say that I've read Hitman, but I you know I love Garth Ennis. I read the whole Preacher Run was yeah my I love it so much. I have loved it for years. So. I mean, I could see where I would probably enjoy it. Yeah, no, the, the Hitman was probably a bigger, 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 you know, bigger hit because of Garth Ennis's you yeah. know approach to it. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I was a big fan. I mean, I don't know. I we've read Anima on the show. Yes. I don't know. It was fine. What the hell's going on in Anima? It's confusing. I mean, Conan O'Brien was in that one. Oh, that's right. That was dumb. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, shit. I mean, that's. It's that's, just it's a weird. 
It's a weird book. It was a weird thing. It was a weird book. And, and, I, and, and, and her powers and her actual, like, move set and wh- whatever. Move set, like, she's a wrestler. But, like, her actual, you know, existence doesn't make a lot of sense. But, yeah. you know, whatever. Well, who knows? Maybe somebody will bring him back in, like, ten years. Well, you can't like, bring back Gunfire because his arms got chopped off. Well, you could. You could Anima's head you got could chopped off. You could retcon all these people just because, you know. You they... retcon anybody. You could find Anima's head and put it back on her head. Exactly. Well, he's... like, this is the new Anima. Anima. Um, there's a few others too I had I had the one with the Legion of Superheroes the one with Jam who was the the f- fat surfer dude Ugh. from the 30th century I don't even know what his power was I think he was just gnarly is it okay uh, if I don't like the Legion it's fine like to the point where I don't even like I came across Superboy and the Legion a lot yeah and I won't buy it because I really don't like the Legion. I have to be in the right kind of mood for the Legion. I, I sometimes don't. sometimes I find some Legion book. I almost bought like a, one or two of them today, and I was or, you know when we were at the comic book shop, and I just I put it back just because yeah. I I had other stuff I had to focus on. But um, what was another what was another guy blood like Hook? Hook. Yeah, there was Hook. What did he have a hook for a hand? Yes. He did was, he leave it on people's car doors when they were making out on uh, Lovers Lane? No. That wasn't him? No. Man, what a shame. Not the same guy. <laughs> I don't know what his power was. He just had a hook. He was just trying to kill young lovers. He was in the Green Arrow annual. He had a hook hand. Oh, there was also the religious one. There was like the the, the evil priest that became, or something. The thing was Priesty. Like car- c- cardinal asshole or something. Like he was he was, in, he was in the Batman Shadow of the Bat one. Mm. And he, I don't know, the frick, that was a dumb one. His name is Priesty. Priesty. Sure. Uh, then there was. I'm trying to think of the ones. Other ones I read. Uh, there was Eclipso. Eclipso had a fucking annual. Wait, did he come out of Bloodlines? No. no Eclipso was a lot. Eclipso older. was an Eclipso series. Oh yeah, I know that. But I mean, like he he wasn't a character created for Bloodlines though. No, Eclipso's been around for years. Yeah. No, I, we're just talking about characters that were. Created. I know, but he but it is he had an annual. Yeah. Where he introduced Prism. Oh, so was that like his sidekick? No, or? that was the guy because every okay. So the way bloodlines happened was every up uh, every annual, these monsters from space uh-huh. would find a hero. Find well, they would find somebody okay to suck their spinal fluid out of their neck because they had they're like xenomorphs and they had like spiky tongues that sucked. Th- that's how they. I really thought you were gonna say straws. Kind of like straws. And yeah. I was I was picturing like those really cute ones that have like like they're red and white and they have like a stripe. Yeah. And you can like buy them. They like, use swirly straws to they, suck the you, blood. That you put in like mason fluid. jars when yeah. you're having people over for brunch. Those those were that was hipster bloodlines. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. They had a Nintendo Switch on the roof. It was great. And everybody uh, was wearing you know very skinny pants. And there was a guy wearing flip flops and a deep V. Yeah. Um, no beard. No pants. Um, he, <laughs> that guy got arrested. That guy got arrested, and they, they, they and they threw and they took. That's what happened. And to gunfire they, they put, at the end of the last issue. And they put and they put uh, the the switch, uh, Nintendo Switch, in for evidence. And everybody cried. And everybody They're cried. like, oh wait, the graphics suck on this ru- thing anyway. And it ruined the hipster party. Anyways, uh, so he yes, yeah, so everybody. So these aliens would come down, and. I don't know what the fuck they were doing in the first place because there was like you know like a like a end in the beginning ep, uh, ep issue. They would kill a bunch of people, but certain people that they killed would come back to life with superpowers. I get it because of the it just it awakens like a gene, the meta gene in their body, and makes them have some sort of an ability. So Gunfire got the ability to do what he does. Yeah, you know, and then Anima did whatever she did. And Prism and does. Prism was a shiny guy, and he looked like Martin X from the Guardians of the Galaxy. And mm-hmm. I don't really know what he did, but a lot of these characters either just disappeared. They actually had like an ongoing series. For like a little bit mm-hmm. that uh, I actually kind of like to try to find uh, just for the fuck of it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then a lot of them were killed in the New Year's Evil storyline uh, with by Prometheus or something like, you know, as I mentioned, you know, his gunfire's hands got right torn off. Yeah. So um, and uh, yeah, I've, I have a few. I think I, I'm trying to think if I have any other ones. I have. Oh, that's right. I have the Avengers of Superman one where it was loose cannon. Mm. Who was a? He became like a big purple monster with blonde hair, and he, but he was still like a functioning kind of one, you know. Mm-hmm. And he was a police officer. 
uh what was another one i had uh yeah it's, it's it, bone lines is dumb yeah but you know what okay and if, if there's a certain point i was like oh, i was gonna collect them all but then i then i realized i was stupid yeah fair enough. and i stopped doing it that happens so um yeah, so I guess that's I guess that's it for our correspondence. Yeah. Do you have anything else you wanted to add? Um, no, but thank you to everybody who tweeted, emailed, commented on Facebook. Yeah. Um, yeah, if you wanna reach us again, that address is worst collection ever at gmail dot com. You know, please go ahead and send us stuff. And tweet at us on Twitter. Yeah. I'm, at uh, Angry Hero Sean, S H A W N. That's also my Instagram. I post a lot of fun stuff on there. And I'm at Jen Stansfield on Twitter and Instagram, Jen Stansfield.tumblr.com and Jen Stansfield.wordpress.com. Okay. Thanks for joining us uh, for this shorter ish edition of our of of our emails uh and correspondence and we'll do this again some other time coming up when we get a bunch more and we'll uh we'll chat about uh you guys talking to us and thank you for engaging with us and please leave reviews maybe next time we'll read about read all of our reviews our itunes reviews yeah we can go through those i think that'll be a lot of fun sure so uh because we do have a few of those so uh thanks for listening folks and we'll see you again next time bye